vacation next week. Um, I'll see if someone wants to run the meeting while I'm not here. And uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so let's talk about Key Jagged Tensor and Torchrec. Uh, oops, I need to share my screen here too. So what's going on? So uh, last time I told everyone about um, uh, Key Jagged Tensors was at, um, I don't know, it was, an, it was a different meeting. But I basically um, showed people there were two paths in the road we could take. So for context, right, <clears throat> Key Jagged Tensors are these tensors with, uh, you know, variable size internal tensors representing how many IDs per feature you've got. So they're dynamic. And people often like splitting them into their individual feature bits and doing things to them. So the splitting is kind of a pain. And basically, there are two ways you can try to handle it. One is you can just be like, OK, I'm just going to trace the code exactly as the user wrote it, get a very fine grained graph with like a split into 500 tensors and then some stuff and then a cat putting them all together. You can trace this directly. Or you can fuse it because you know in practice, um, you know we are actually already you know do what's called table-wise fusion, fuse things into consolidated operators, and go ahead and run it that way. <clears throat> so um, so basically, uh, last time I talked to people about this, I was basically like, hey, you know the fine grain tracing seems a bit uh, hairy uh, because you know there's lots of very fine grained reasoning on a you know sort of view by view basis that you know makes things kind of difficult um, let's try a little harder with the fused version so i'm happy to report that uh, we are able to full graph equals true trace through the entirety of torchrec drm after it's been sharded um, so this is not with any this is without any distributed uh, code so what we're essentially doing is um, i I gave it a world size of one, and then I stubbed out all the uh, distributed code that we didn't understand. Um, and uh, as a result, we get this log. And I'm just going to show you the interesting part, which is at the end. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of guards. Essentially, what we see here is this is, um, this is the DLRM uh, model. And what it is doing is uh, there's a bunch of stuff initially, uh, and then eventually. Oh, is this the? Oh, sorry. This is the. Um, this is the joint graph. I don't want. I don't want to show you the joint graph. Here, here's the graph we managed to trace. What you can see is that uh, uh, there is a uh, there in this particular example there are 26 uh, features. Um, that we're operating over, so that number is hard coded in. Um, but um, actually, there's a bit more um, stuff going on here than there's still a little bit of fine grained reasoning going on here. But essentially, what's going on is eventually uh, we get to this giant kernel call, which is essentially um, uh, when you when you do torchrec and then you have a embedding table lookup. And then you ask Torchrec to shard your model. It will also go ahead and replace those uh, lookups with a giant fused kernel um, that does the lookup on all the embedding tables at the same time, as well as uh, sets up a a backward hook so that it will fuse the autograd update into the parameter as well in that case. And so you can see that we've um, traced this in. There is a cat over here. But this is after you've gotten rid of all the dynamism. Each of these individual catted items has the same size, and then there's a you know mini, there's a small dense arc that we just go through at the end to process after we've handled the sparse architecture features. So that's nifty. Um, other questions? There aren't any questions yet. Uh, and um, Ed, hey, Ed, you kind of dropped out there for a few seconds. Uh, 
right at the end. Maybe the last couple of sentences again. Okay. Um, and then we run the dense arc for the uh, torch rift DLRM, which is just a normal, you know, matrix multiply feed for network. And that's it. So, hey, it compiles. And importantly, um, if you look over here, uh, we managed to run the network again with some different size uh, inputs and we don't recompile. So, so you just uh, use the same thing in each case. So that's pretty cool. And um, I had to do a bunch of hacks. Some of the hacks are pretty easy to fix. Like there were a bunch of random Dynamo bugs that uh, Vaz has kindly jumped on top of um, fixing wise. Um, so those aren't big problems. So I just want to point out some of the major things that um, uh, need a little bit more discussion. So one thing is that um, the FBGEM fused operator is actually very, very complicated because not only is it, so here's the meta function that I had to write for it. And you can see there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of arguments here. So the reason why there are so many arguments is because it's doing a lot of things all at once. So it is not only doing the inventing table lookup, but there's also some sort of uh, pipelining going on, which I turned off for the purposes of this. But when you're actually doing this in a real distributed setting, you want to pipeline the remote lookups so that they show up you know, when you need them ahead of time. And also because we fused in the backwards autograd function, um, we need all of the uh, parameters for you know programming you know what exactly autograd is doing in the situation. So yeah, a lot of a lot of arguments. Um, the meta function itself is not too complicated. I actually implemented the wrong one, and then I had to re-implement it under a different configuration. Uh, but there's a version of this for every single fused optimizer that FBGen supports. They actually have a code gen process where they like they have a list of optimizers they know how to do, and then they just generate these kernels by like generating C++ code. So I'm not I'm not really sure what to do about this. Like if we just blast through it directly, we'll just write metas for all of them. Maybe this is not a good idea. I don't know. Vaz. Wait, Ed, you're cutting out for us again. Oh, where, did, where did I cut out? Where you're, you're not sure what to do. 